You'll notice throughout this video that there are a few questions I had about the bike. I did email Fuel and get an answer to those, so stay tuned to the end and I'll make sure you get those questions answered. Hey everybody, Kyle from Bolton E-Bikes back again. Last time I did a video was up in Northern California, kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and basically this is the exact opposite because I'm down in Santa Monica showing you the new Fuel electric bike. So this bike is not available quite yet. You can pre-order it on Indiegogo. So this is one of the early, I guess we can call it a prototype models uh, that's available for demo rides. So looks like it's had a little bit of use and abuse before I've gotten to it, but I'll try and give you my unbiased opinion uh, based on what I think of the bike, how it looks, the components on it. So before I go ride it around some more, uh, let me just give you a quick rundown on the basics if you haven't seen it before. Uh, so this is the Fuel Fluid 1S designed by Eric Buell. Some of you may remember his name from the Buell motorcycle line. And one of the unique things is the frame. So this is a definitely a unique custom one of a kind frame. And the reason is because of these two integrated batteries here. So whereas most e-bikes only have one battery, they have designed a frame which can hold one or two. So both options are on the Indiegogo page and obviously makes sense in my mind if you're going to buy one of these. You might as well go for both batteries because no one ever wishes they had less range. So you've got a battery on the top and a battery on the bottom. Uh, now, one of the questions I asked, uh, and I don't know the answer to, so I'll have to find this out, is does it come with two chargers? Because there are two separate ports, one here and one down there. I'm assuming if you buy both batteries, that is the case, but I wasn't able to confirm that quite yet. Other than that, it really is just a very sleek, nice looking frame. You've got an integrated mid-drive motor down here. Uh, this is not a Bafang or some other brand you've heard of like Bosch or Shimano. It's something entirely different. I think I have heard of this motor being used on uh, some other bikes in the past, but I'm not 100% sure. I will go dig up those numbers on there and see if I can figure out exactly where that came from. Uh, but it's not a mid-drive motor that I'm aware of as being used on any other bike at the moment. Now going along with the drivetrain, the other thing we've got instead of a chain is this we have a belt drive now the saunders bikes came out with a belt drive on some of those thin models um, but it was kind of a generic belt of some sort it didn't have a name on it um, this one actually is a gates belt drive so this is a name brand belt drive these are components you should be able to get so that's a plus i haven't heard anything bad about these so the idea is more reliability by going with a belt drive and an internal hub for the shifting as opposed to a derailleur so internal hubs are pretty reliable so uh, they have a good reputation for being uh, more reliable than a chain less wear and tear and less maintenance and that's one of the things they've been advertising with this bike is very low maintenance uh, other things I'm looking at as I'm just learning about the bike for the first time, it's the first time I've ever seen it. Uh, I see a few screws on the back here. I'm guessing perhaps that's how you access some of the wiring. Perhaps the controller could be in there or it could be integrated into the motor. I do not know the answer to that yet either. And I might not by the time this video comes out. So I apologize if you have more questions than answers, but at the very least, uh, I want to give you my best opinion on what I have in front of me because that's what I've got. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, an expert here on site with me. Uh, basically, I had somebody that was able to come by and very nice about it say, here's the bike. Uh, you've got it for however much time you need this afternoon and that was about it. <laughs> so, uh, we do have a suspension fork on the front and it appears to be an air shock. We've got a preload and a lockout adjustment. Uh, there is a horn here and a headlight. So those are standard items with the bike. The mirror, I don't honestly know. Uh, there's a horn button here, but it's not actually doing anything. So I don't know if there's something else I have to do to enable that, or if it's not working. 
uh, but I turned the bike on, I pressed a few times and nothing happened. So sorry, I can't give you any comments as to what the horn sounds like or how loud it is. I think we should be able to test out the headlight though. Let's get the screen turned back on. And usually with these, there we go. Turn on that, uh, hold that up button for a few seconds and that turns the headlight on. It's hard to tell how bright that's gonna be because it's the middle of the day right now. Uh, looks decently bright. I think it's probably like most lights on e-bikes that come standard and my opinion would be that they are good for being seen and if you want something to see, you might want something a little bit brighter. But it's not nighttime, so don't quote me on that for this one. Uh, as far as the screen goes, uh, a little bit hard to see in the daytime here. These can be adjusted. This is a standard, here, why don't we move this into the shade. This is a pretty standard display that's used on uh, Bafang controllers and motors. So I like that, it gives you the the basic features that you need. It gives you your wattage, your battery percentages up here. Some of these can be reprogrammed to show voltage instead of a percentage. And it's got your trip meter, odometer, time. Uh, and there's a, a range thing on there too. So we'll see uh, how far these bikes go in reality. I'm not gonna do a full range test, uh, partially because unfortunately I don't have time to drain two batteries down and see how far that will go. Uh, and then the other reason uh, is that it didn't have a full charge when I got here. So it's got a decent charge. I should be able to ride it around for a while and give you a good impression, uh, but not fully charged. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the drivetrain. As far as the, the batteries, they're 48 volts. And if you have both installed, that's 1,000, just a little over 1,000 watt hours. So if you had a, say a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery, for example, that'd be 480 watt hours. So it would take two of those to equal what's on here. So that is a little bit more than average. Not too many bikes have that much battery power on board as an option stock. Uh, now the other thing is brakes, of course. So we'll spin around here. Those are decent rotors. So those look like uh, 180 millimeters just by looks without seeing a label on them. It comes with uh, hydraulic brakes. They're the Tektro brand. So you can see those down here. Uh, and then as far as the, the wheels, uh, you've got some nice Schwab uh, and those are pretty wide. So those will work on road, off road, depending on the pressure, it could be comfortable or hard. Um, those are just a good all around tire, not a, not a heavy duty off-road tire, but I, I wouldn't be afraid to go hit some dirt trails here and there, a little bit of gravel. Uh, and those would do fine just because they're large enough to handle that. Um, well, I think the next thing to do is just go ride it around some more and give you some more feedback on what I think. So let's go ahead and put the camera on the bike and do that. Okay, we're gonna hop on it and I'll just try and tell you about the bike as I ride it. The tires are a little bit soft at the moment, um, so not a big deal. Suspension is pretty soft as well. I'm gonna stick to some of the quieter streets so hopefully you can hear me better. So right now I'm in a pedal assist one and Kind of in the middle of the gear range I'm gonna shift down a little bit so once again this is a mid-drive motor with a belt drive and an internal hub so pretty unique not too many set up this way from the factory and the idea is like i said low maintenance these should be parts that last a long long time and you don't have to mess with the chain or the derailleur and those things it's a 500 watt nominal i believe is what they're calling it and i could see that i wish i had a nice steep hill to test it out on, but I don't. The other thing that the bike is lacking or missing, at least for me, it doesn't really need it, is a throttle. So I just pedal assist only. Don't know if that'll ever be an option or a modification that could be added. Uh, just be aware that no throttle. There must be a speed limit or something enabled because I'm pedaling along and we're not really getting much power anymore. There, it kicked on a little bit. Feels. Okay, so 
you can pedal a little bit faster, put some more effort in, it picks up a little more. When you've got it turned all the way up on five, it's not the smoothest when it kicks on, but every new bike is different and they take a little getting used to. There's a whole new drive system that I've never used. That's the motor. You've got a Shimano Alfine or Alfine internal hub, so that's nothing unusual. I have used those before, but the mid-drive um, may take a little bit getting used to just because they're all, they have their slight quirks, I would say, in handling. But it's got some decent power. It's easy to pedal. Very nice, smooth rolling bike. So no complaints there. I don't have a weight on it, and I wish I had a scale here, <laughs> but I don't. But it doesn't feel heavy, uh, especially considering the amount of battery capacity that's on it. It's a good city bike for sure. You could ride around because of the batteries, the smooth tires right around all day on this with both of them on. And I think you would get some pretty good range. I'd really like to test out the torque on a steep hill, but there aren't any of those right here. I'd have to go quite a few miles before I found a nice steep hill to try it out on. I think the closest thing I can do at the moment, I'm gonna pull off to the side here. I'm gonna shift into the lowest gear. We've got the pedal assist turned all the way up to five and give it some pedaling right from the start and see how the power kicks on and Hopefully that'll give me an impression of what this could do up a hill. Okay. Um, I know the spec said, I want to say they said 100 Newton meters of torque. I'm not sure I'm feeling that compared to other mid-drive motors that have similar specs. I have, it feels very similar to a motor I had on the a couple of carbon fiber e-bikes with mid-drive motors. I don't believe it's the same one, but performance-wise it feels similar. Uh, how the power kicks on, even the sound has a little bit of a whine to it. The shifting is pretty smooth. I think it needs a little adjustment. And that was a little weird. I was riding along pedal assist, then all of a sudden it felt like nothing was happening and the screen turned off. It just says battery 100%, which can't, totally be true because it wasn't fully charged and I've been riding it around a little bit. As you put in more effort, it definitely gives you more power. So that's nice. Kind of gives you that superhuman sort of feeling rather than having to crank the power up. And maybe that's why when I first took off, it really didn't feel that strong. We're going to shift down again. And this time I'm going to pedal hard from the get go. It goes, but it's, it doesn't lurch. The front wheel doesn't act like it's gonna lift up. This thing's never gonna pull a wheelie on you. Let's put it that way. And then brakes. <laughs> so brakes are good. Front needs a little adjustment, but the rear brake is really good. But I think uh, I've talked about this in other videos. The Tektro are one of the better kind of budget brands of e-brake you can get because the only other option is factory made, really would be the Magura brakes. And they're, they're about 300 some bucks for a set. So a little pricey, but they're really nice. And that's the only other thing I would say is this is not a, an inexpensive bike. It is, depending on the options, anywhere from the mid load, mid twos, up to right around the three grand price point with the batteries. It'd be nice to see better brakes, but these are not bad by any means. We're gonna roll into the shade over here and uh, stop and look things over a little bit more. So on the top of the batteries, you've got one button right there you can press to see if it's charged. Just gives you an idea. On the second battery, you've got the same thing tucked in right here. Uh, I don't have the keys for the bike, otherwise I'd pop these off uh, and tell you a little bit more about the connections and how they look. Um, you know, the only thing I can comment on is the, the bottom one looks really nice and it's in there well. Um, the top battery doesn't have the best fit and finish. Uh, I don't know why. I just, there's an obvious gap in person where the whole battery is kind of sitting off to the, the left a little bit. So hopefully that's just a prototype thing. And when the production versions are out, that's not the case. Uh, I'm just telling you like it is and what I see here. Okay, so now that I've ridden it around a little bit, uh, just have some final thoughts, I guess you could say. You know, without giving you scores on all the things, because this isn't a production-ready bike yet, uh, and I think it would be better done on one that's pulled out of the box where I can actually see the packaging, 
see how it's delivered, all of those things. Um, basically, here's what I like about it, or here's the things that I don't like about it. Uh, you guys know how I am. I'm gonna tell you straight up and honestly what I think, <laughs> whether that's good or bad. Um, what I do like is that you've got a brand new competitor in the e-bike field from somebody totally new uh, who's coming in with some expertise on two-wheeled vehicles. And I think uh, there's a chance for them to do some good things, uh, not only with this bike, but hopefully some other models. So I like the fact that they came right out of the box with a unique frame, um, just something a bit different. Um, you've got the, the high quality belt drive. Uh, you've got the internal gearing. Those are really nice. I have no complaints about either of those. Um, I don't think I would have done anything differently if I was going to go for a mid-drive belt driven type of bike other than I might have gone with more power. So it's a 500 watt mid-drive motor and typically I would expect a mid-drive to perform better than a comparable hub motor. And I had mentioned a, a carbon fiber bike that uh, I'd had a couple of prototypes of. Uh, may have seen them in some background of videos, not something I ever sold really. Um, but they had a very similar motor to this and I think it was rated at 350 watts and it felt about the same to me. So I feel like a 500 watt hub motor from some companies um, is going to perform very similarly to this. But again, that goes into those wattage ratings and advertising and how people present things. So it felt similar to some of the 500 watt hub motor bikes uh, that I offer, um, similar to the 750 watt in a rat power bike. So that gives you an idea of the power level. Um, it didn't have a whole lot of oomph off the line. So I am concerned about areas that have lots of hills that it might not be able to handle them as well as some other bikes, especially because you don't have a throttle uh, to give you an instant start going up hills. So there are certainly bikes that are more powerful that take off quicker. I think in a city area like here in Santa Monica in the flatter areas, this bike would be great and you would get a ton of range out of it, especially with both batteries. So the tires are good quality, name brand tire. I like those. Um, so I like the, the belt drive, I like the tires, uh, I like the unique frame, a um, little weird on the fit and finish in a couple of spots. So hopefully they can tighten those up in production. Um, you know, maybe it's just how the battery was, was clipped in. Maybe somebody didn't do it quite right, but I don't have the keys to try it myself and see if I can line it up better. Um, you know, hydraulic brakes with some uh, decent sized rotors. So good there. Um, you know, the fork is, is decent. Um, nothing terribly fancy for how much the bike cost, um, but it's good. Um, and then uh, you've got a color display, so that's nice. Um, this certainly could be set up differently. The way it's got the spacers here in the stem lower, you can actually use the USB port that's on the screen. Um, so that's these should just be moved down and the stem should be moved up. Most people wouldn't want to ride it with that, that low anyway. Um, I don't have any comments on the horn because it's not working. Um, the front fender looks pretty nice. I like that on there. I don't know if there's a rear one that comes with it. It's got kind of a little flap back here. Um, I'm not sure what you're really going to do with that. Um, but overall, I, I like the bike, I was just hoping for more. I was hoping for the price point and the name brand that's on it that it would just really amaze me and just be like, wow, you guys, this bike is awesome. And I, it's just not quite there for me, not, not yet. So I think there's some room for improvement. Um, you know, the standover height's a decent, uh, I don't actually know which size this bike is. I do see they offer a medium and a large. Um, so that's something that would be nice to know. Um, so a little lacking on some of the details I got here today, but I'm gonna try and find out some more. And if I get more things, I'll add them to this video for sure. Um, but there it is in a nutshell. Um, I like the belt drive system. 
the motor, I was really hoping for more out of it. Um, and then just the, the overall fit, finish, quality of the bike. I was hoping for something that just said, wow, this is a really great bike for the price. And it just didn't quite do that for me. But I don't think it's a bad bike. I don't think you'd go wrong with it if you're looking for a city bike with a ton of range. So if that's what you're after, if you want those two batteries, uh, great. You know, if you're not sold on that whole idea, you really can put that much battery power in other things. You just might have to get a spare battery or modify it in some way. So I think they've got something good going here. I think if they refine it a little bit, this is gonna be an awesome bike one day. So I hope they take that next step uh, and bring this up to what I would expect for the Indiegogo prices being offered in. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe. And uh, if I find out anything else between now and when the video is released, I'll make sure to add it to the video. So I did email Fuel about the questions I had during the video. Now, number one was the chargers. And if you buy the bike with two batteries, I made the assumption that it might come with two chargers, but the email response I got to that was, no, the bike just comes with one charger. The only thing that was a little confusing to me still is that I thought I had read on the Indiegogo page that the charger rate was four amps, which is totally reasonable. It certainly could be. Uh, but if they're using a small barrel connector, usually those aren't rated for four amps. So I don't know what the real answer is on the charger. It definitely comes with one. Uh, I was hoping it would come with two so you could charge two batteries at once and double the charging speed, but that may not be the case. Now, the second question I had was about the motor and who makes it. Do they have any more information about it? And the only thing I was given was the brand or the manufacturer, which is, if I'm pronouncing it right, Bofeli. And they do make motors for other e-bikes that are already on the market. Uh, FLX, I think, and so oh, now I'm drawing a blank on the other one. But they do make motors for other brands of electric bikes that are already on the market. However, they're not gonna be the same motor as this one because they said in quotes, let me make sure I'm reading this right, that it was proprietary for a period of time. So whatever motor they're using is not the same model of motor that's using, being used on other electric bikes currently available. Now, as far as the bike itself and either being a prototype or a production version, Basically, they told me that is the production frame and everything. There are no changes planned. So I was hoping maybe there might be a slight bit of improvement on some of the fit and finish, um, but it's possible that's how the bikes are coming out. So hopefully that answers any of the questions that are out there, probably is gonna bring up some more, but those are my first impressions on the Fuel Fluid e-bike. Hope you enjoyed this video and come back again soon.